Helen. Thank you very much, John. Um, I think what is truly remarkable is that even though uh, Bretton Woods essentially collapsed with a run out of the dollar, ever since 1973, in effect, if anything, the dominance of the dollar has risen uh, in international financial system. And we have seen a lot of figures. I won't come back uh, on these figures. Um, but uh, I think it's certainly due both to phenomena linked to network externalities and all that, but also simply to the, complement to the complementarity uh, that is very present in the use of an international currency, complementarity between the different use of a currency. If you are financing in a currency, then you want liquidity in that currency, you transact in that currency, then you want your exchange rate to be pegged in that currency, then your central bank has reserved in that currency, then the transaction costs are low in that currency, etc., etc. So there are complementarities both within the private sector and across the public sector and, and the private sector. And this makes an equilibrium very, very hard to, uh, uh, to change. We have seen that with sterling, we are seeing that with the dollar. Now, does it matter? So in fact, if anything, I think the current research in, uh, in economics, in, uh, in academia, shows that it matters even more than what we thought in the past. So there are lots of papers now that show that uh, this business about dominant currency invoicing, the fact that a lot of, um, of goods are invoiced in dollar, is very important for monetary policy. It's also important for the volume of global trade. We see this amazing correlation, at this stage I would still call them correlation, between uh, the valuation of the dollar, so for example the dollar strengthening, and the decline in global volume of trade. And the effects are, are these correlations are big, so that's one. We also see these, um, these big effects of the Fed on uh, global financial condition, the global financial cycle, and that actually affects everyone. So I would say, if anything, it seems to matter more from an economic point of view than, than maybe what we thought before. Now, there's also obviously, and we have seen this in the 2008 crisis, the international lender of last resort function, which has proved, I would say, pretty crucial. 600 billion uh, you know, dollar liquidity which went uh, in central bank swaps to, to help the international financial system. And obviously, so that was not the IMF because the IMF cannot print dollar, that was, that was the Fed which is providing the liquidity. And that means a lot from the point of view of um, geopolitical power, also from the point of view of, of economic uh, benefits. So the system uh, has been relatively stable since uh, you know, the Second World War with one hegemon, the, the US dollar and, and the United States, and I guess Charles Kindleberger would agree that that's hegemonic stability for you and that seems to have, to have worked to some extent. But now, how long is it gonna last? I guess it's a big question, right? And, and there I see so two reasons why things might be changing and then I will be very brief about you know, where, we might, uh, where we might be going. So the two reasons are one which has already been, <laughs> been mentioned here, which is that you know, things are stable if you have a relatively quasi-benevolent hegemon. Now if you have a hegemon who starts being over-politicizing uh, the currency and, uh, and really using it for all kinds of purposes, trust evaporates, and that tends to, to speed up the exit of, of a current equilibrium. And we, are, we certainly see that. Okay, right now, I would say. So that's one, one factor. A second factor is a little bit more of a trend. And uh, that's what I call the new Trifin dilemma. So let me tell you what was the Trifin dilemma, and then I will tell you what the new Trifin dilemma, so we see if you, if you agree with me. So the, the original Trifin dilemma, it was in the 1960s, and it was Robert Trifin, who was professor at Yale at the time, was explaining that if you have a fixed uh, or more or less fixed reserve of, of gold in the United States and the dollar was backed by gold and picked at a fixed parity, well, if the liquidity in dollars in the rest of the world was going and growing, eventually if people wanted their dollars back into gold, there wouldn't be enough gold for everyone, essentially, and therefore that can create a crisis of confidence. You start to think that your dollar is not going to be worth the parity in gold because there's just not enough gold reserves. Hence a possible run out of the dollar, which did happen, so Trifin essentially uh, predicted it in some sense, uh, and that was the collapse of, of Bretton Woods, and there was a run out of the dollar into Deutsche Mark, etc. Now, we don't have anymore an international monetary system backed by a commodity. We just 
just not the way it works. We have flexible exchange rate and fiat currencies. However, if you think about what is the confidence in the dollar, well, essentially it's the fiscal backing of a currency. People still want dollar as a reserve currency because in crisis times, and we have seen it in 2008 very much, and we still see it, when, when things go badly, the value of the dollar, if anything, goes up. Okay, and, and we might see even flight to safety in the dollar. And this is because of the credibility, in a sense, of a fiscal backing uh, of the United States. So now picture yourself a world in which we have the fiscal capacity of the US, okay, and we have the relative size of the US going tremendously down in the world economy. So now we have a lot of liquidity outside the US, a lot of dollar liquidity in the world. There's a huge demand for US treasuries, as we know. But we have this uh, shrinking hegemon in the, in the middle. The relative size of the US goes down. Now, at some points, clearly, I think, there will be also a confidence crisis. There just won't be enough fiscal, fiscal support to, to back this whole dollar liquidity in the world economy. Now, when will that happen? I have no idea. Uh, and of course, also to, for, the, for the crisis of confidence to realize itself, you need to be able to run out of the dollar into something else, okay? And this is where I go to the third point. So I do believe we are gonna to go to a more multipolar world because of this fundamental trend and also uh, given the behavior of the current uh, government in the US, when I don't know. But so what will be the possible substitutes there? So clearly, number two, the euro. Okay, what's missing from the euro right now? A safe asset. Uh, it's missing to complete the financial architecture of the euro area, okay? So for the euro to become a more important currency, we miss the same thing that would make the euro area more stable. So that would be a policy goal, and I think it had been neglected, but I think Europeans are becoming a little bit more aware of that, and, and there's a lot more attention given to these matters, at least I hope, uh, now. So, so that's, that's the euro story. The RMB, the RMB clearly there is a political will, as we've seen from the data, we're still way below you know, what it would require for an international currency to, to be viable, form of convertibility, liquidity of market, et cetera. But there's clearly a push from the, from the Chinese authority. And uh, given the size of China, I think if there is, at some point, things start to move, they could move actually maybe quicker than, than we expect. And, and one reason for that was that for the moment, maybe we, you know, we see a whole area in the world economy which is more or less pegging to the dollar, stabilizing its exchange rate vis-a-vis -vis the dollar, but by doing so, it's also stabilizing its exchange rate vis-a-vis -vis China because they are shadowing a little bit each other. And if at some point we see a decoupling between China and the dollar, it could be that actually the true economic area because of the trade links, etc., is the Chinese economic area rather than the dollar one. And so this could actually speed things up maybe quicker than, than we think. But we are still not there for sure. And then I would just say one, one last thing, which is, you know, we've seen recently some contests coming from the private sector. You know, Libra will probably what not happen, we don't know, but or other things like that. So why? Because these things build on an existing network. Of course, they lack any other good functions of money, et cetera. So again, I don't think it's a viable proposition, but at least in terms of scale, I think that's something that is really new because of the existing network which could right away play in the medium of exchange function, but of course doesn't have any fiscal backing. This is why, by the way, the synthetic hegemonic, uh, or the synthetic, uh, uh, hegemonic currency of Marconi, which is like, of a, a, you know, like an SDR but with digital currency, is also not gonna fly because for the same reason the SDR did not fly because it doesn't have the liquidity provision and the, the fiscal backing.